everlasting Lord. Late in time, behold him come, offspring of the virgin womb. Filled in flesh, the Godhead see, hailed the incarnate deity. Pleased as man with men to dwell, Jesus our Emmanuel. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Hail the heavenborn Prince of Peace, hail the Son of Righteousness, light and life to all he brings, risen with healing in his wings. Mild he lays his glory by, born that man no more may die, born to raise the sons of earth, born to give them second birth. Hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. You may be seated. Uh, we would like to welcome you here. This is our Christmas, our special Christmas Sunday. Christmas is coming up in just a few days, and uh, so we want to just especially celebrate that. Uh, we do thank you for coming today. We're thankful for those of you that are here. We're thankful for those of you that We'll be joining this community later through our recordings, and, uh, and we wanted to sing some Christmas songs because Christmas caroling wasn't much of a thing this year, was it? Um, so uh, we'll be doing some of that. Uh, I do have some announcements. Um, is, is Jubal here? Jubal, did you have an announcement for us? <laughs> Can you think of anything? Yeah, very good. So that's Eleanor Dorothy Handrich, seven pounds, four ounces, born at about 3 a.m. on Saturday, and we are excited for them. So that is a fun announcement. Um, we have a, a candlelight service coming up on Christmas Eve. Uh, it, will, it will be outdoors. Um, it, it is at 9 p.m., so for those of you that are used to like a midnight service, 9 p.m. is no big deal, but we're making up for that with the coldness. So that's that's kind of the that's kind of the plan. So just dress warm. Uh, we do hope that you will join us for that. Um, the birthday gifts for Christ offering is today. If you'd like to uh, if you'd like to get give to that, there are envelopes uh, should be in the back. Uh, you can get them here. Just ask someone in the in the foyer there. Uh, please do read these announcements. On in the uh, bulletin and go over those things um, and those are all the all the ones I will mention right now um, let's let's just remember the Lord and let's go to him in prayer now Lord we do just thank you for this holiday season as we have uh, several holidays put right together we thank you for um, this past holiday that we have been reminded of thankfulness and just uh, where you've put us and what you've given us. Uh, we thank you for this upcoming holiday that we can be reminded of the birth of Christ and just what he has done uh, for his people, Lord. Uh, and then even New Year's, Lord, we can be reminded that we are a new creation in you and, and we just sort of reset things and start things over and, and that can be just a reminder of our new life, Lord. Please help us to uh, think these truths and let them sink in uh, as we listen to Christmas hymns and Christmas carols uh, that just tell this story. We pray that they would not be, uh, they would not just be tradition, but they would be truth, that we are not just uh, 
someone singing things because it is December, but that we, were, we are singing these things because we love Christ and want to live for him and are just thankful for what he has done. Help us to just remember the good news of, of Christ's birth and his life and his death and resurrection um, that have paid for our sins, Lord. We thank you that we are still able to meet here in person and that we do have a fellowship of believers. We thank you for little Eleanor Handrich and for just the blessing that it will be to have a little more noise in the back there. And uh, <laughs> we pray for our young people. Help us to raise them well just that the future generations of this church would, would not neglect the gospel and that they would not neglect the word of God. We pray for our future pastor, that you would prepare him and his family for this church and this community. Please bring him into our sights and give the search committee wisdom and direction as they proceed. We pray for our elders, that they would use wisdom that comes straight from you, Lord, uh, as they make these decisions. We thank you for those that have served and have finished their term this month and for those that are coming on. Give them a strong bond and, and then just protect them from, uh, from strife as I'm sure there are disagreements. We pray for those that are sick and recovering in our church community. Uh, for Kenny Shea, for Jamie Marble, for Joan Troyer, and for Carl Huff, that you would just heal them make them feel well. And we pray for uh, just the families of those that have passed away. For the family of uh, Kip Abbey, who passed away this week, um, and just especially for uh, Ray Cables and Linda Esch, as they are her children. And then for Anne O'Dell, as her sister Nancy passed away. So just comfort them. And uh, we pray that as they have these funerals, that that uh, that your name would just be glorified in the in the message of the funeral, and that that um, sinners would just be called to repentance as they see their lives as as uh, short. We pray for uh, John and Julie Longacre with InterVarsity. I thank you especially for uh, the way that InterVarsity affected my life and um, the way that I was able to grow through that ministry. So we thank you that that can continue. Um, and thank you, Lord, for all that you've given us. Um, you have given us a church uh, building and then a church community, and then you have just kept it uh, strong and faithful to your word over these many years. Um, please make yourself known through these, uh, these songs and then through scripture later on. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand again. Or wait, actually, Jubal. Jubal is on the candle lighting. You don't have to stand. Christmas must be close. We've got four candles lit. Kind of. Do you have a private life with God? As we increasingly live every aspect of our lives on display, posted far and wide for the world to see, it becomes difficult to retain a hidden self, especially in a true and redemptive sense. We may be quick to hide things that cause us shame or guilt, yet do we know how to cultivate a life of holy silence and solitude, learning to hear the voice of God as we do? With Christmas just a few days away, everything in your life is likely ramping up. Nothing about this week feels settled, calm, or quiet. Yet this final week of Advent invites us to resist that chaotic impulse towards anxious hurry and instead listen and reflect upon the word 
God has given to us. As Mary cultivated the life of a faithful follower of God, including regular times of private prayer and devotion, she found herself present and attentive, and therefore ready to receive the word of God. Yet as this word drew near, we see today that it, le it left her disoriented, overcome by its weight and glory. But what does Mary do? She ponders all these things in her heart. This Advent, the Lord is drawing near, speaking words of hope and love over his people. Resist the urge to fill the day with endless activities and external concerns, but choose instead to receive and prayerfully ponder the word of God spoken to you. Let's pray. Purify our conscience, almighty God, by your daily visitation, that your son, Jesus Christ, at his coming, may find in us a mansion prepared for himself, him who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right, now let's stand together, if you're able. Christmas songs are, are uh, used. 
and there's so much packed into it. This was also, this might be known as the Linus speech for some of you that like Charlie Brown Christmas movies. Um, so Luke 2, the birth of Jesus Christ. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with great fear. And the angel said to them, fear not, for behold, I bring to you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those whom, with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Uh, let's continue to sing together. Angels from the realms of glory, wing your flight o'er all the earth. He who sang creation's story, now proclaim Messiah's birth. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shepherds in the fields abiding, watching o'er your flocks by night. God with us is now residing, yonder shines the infant light. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Sages, lead your contemplations, brighter visions beam afar. Seek the great desire of nations, ye have seen his natal star. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Saints before the altar bending, watch along in hope and fear. Suddenly the Lord descending in his temple shall appear. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Wrong with true repentance, doomed for guilt to endless pain. Justice now revokes the sentence, mercy calls you break your chains. Come and worship, come and worship, worship Christ the newborn King. Shall then bow down. 
Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let's praise the Lord together. Thank you for uh, just your perfect plan um, to give us uh, lives that can be lived in you, that can be lived through you, and that can be lived uh, to the praise of your glory, Lord. Help us to glorify you with our lives. Help us to love you more and more, and help us to love others around us because we love you. Uh, please be with uh, Troy as he, speech, as he speaks today. Um, and we thank you just for these names uh, that you've given yourself to just show us uh, who you are and uh, just bless this time, Lord. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I was just thinking as we came in today and I see the icicles and the snow, uh, as a kid, we always went out to my grandma's in Kalkaska, which always has way more snow than we did downstate, and that made it a true Christmas, cr true, true Christmas time of the year, and it's nice to have that. So welcome in, uh, in a nice warm building, and for all of you who are at home um, watching, welcome. Uh, Dan spoke just briefly there about names. We've been talking about the names of... Um, 
for Jesus. And I'm like, what, what's in a title or a name? So since birth, I've been Troy, right? To my friends, to just the people I meet for the most part. It's just Troy. That's just a pretty casual name. Then I started teaching, and I got a different title. And uh, many of my students wanted to argue that. And when I was first teaching, and I, I looked pretty young, I had some parents that wanted to question that too, but I became Mr. Ross. And uh, I said, um, when you get a different name, usually there comes some different expectations. The kids would give me a hard time. Why are you so adamant that we call you Mr. Ross? Well, Mr. Ross, when you start calling somebody Mr. or Mrs., especially in the school setting, that's usually because they're a teacher and they have a role to play in your life. And it's not the same as Troy. It's not the same as your friends. It's not the uh, same as just people you meet on the streets. It's, it's different. And so I, I wanted to be held accountable to that. I didn't want to be just somebody down the street to them. And um, it's always kind of interesting 20 years later to talk to some of them who it's still Mr. Ross or some of them very quickly because I tell them as soon as you graduate, it, it's Troy. And uh, it's curious to see how they go back and forth. Another name that I've held for probably a, almost as long or a little longer is Coach or Coach Ross. And again, that title holds different expectations of you. Um, different, a little different than, than uh, the Mr. Ross or most of the time definitely different than just the, the Troy. Uh, but there's expectations. Then I became an uncle and I, I, I try to be pretty adamant with my kids that they call their aunts and uncles aunt and uncle because that, that's a title, that's a name that should bring with it some expectations and a little bit of respect. You know, the uncle is the, the good one. They're the one that gets to get the loud, obnoxious Christmas presents and send them with them. So that, that's a good title. And um, someday maybe there's the, the grandparent or there's the father or dad. And it was interesting. A lot of my friends, like, you're going to have your kids in school, you know, and you're going to see them all the time. Are you going to make them call you Mr. Ross? I'm like, No. The title they get to call me is a much bigger title. It's a dad, or, or it's usually dad, um, but not father. But that has much bigger reaching expectations of what, what you should be doing. So when I got this, when Jubal, and it's uh, Jubal left, but I think about, he's telling me to preach about being a father, and he's got five kids, five girls at that. <laughs> well, uh, more power to him on that one, but uh, you start thinking about that title, that name, and um, so we, I'll, I'll turn to uh, Isaiah 9, 6, the one we've been focusing on here, and it says, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and we will, he will be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Those are some pretty big titles. But the, the father part, you think about a father, most of us, not everything, and I, not everybody, unfortunately, has that father. And sometimes that father is not their biological father. It might not even be somebody in their household. And I guess um, to my former students out there, when you called me Mr. Ross in school, there's a little bit of that expectation. You might have been fine. You might have grew up in the household with your father or that person that you saw as your father. Some people don't have anybody. And as a teacher in the school, there's always that little bit.